For this week's video, we're going to step back from the wires a little bit to talk about some really important concepts about creating your own compositions. As always, I would love to hear your feedback in the comments section below. The elements of design are seven tools that you can use to make sure that you're creating the most effective compositions possible within your wire pieces. The seven elements of design are line, shape, form, color, value, texture, and space. Let's go ahead and dive in. Let's start with line. Using a variation of lines can add more depth and contrast to your composition. Lines could be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, straight, curved, thick or thin. I used a variation of several different wires, all running along the same path, to create more texture to this piece. Almost all of my work is made up using curved lines, but you could use straight or angular lines to create a completely different feel for your compositions. Shape is your use of geometric or organic surfaces. For geometric, it could be something like using a flower of life pattern, or for organic, it could be something like I use with the use of swirls and filigree. I've always been fascinated by filigree, so most of my shapes include these little swirls that add all the accents to my pieces. When it comes to form, we're talking about the three-dimensional shape of the piece, whether it's something that's double-sided, where you've worked stones into both sides, or whether it's something like I use, where it runs from back to front and all the way back through to the front of the shape again, creating one continuous line throughout the pendant. Form could also be other organic shapes, such as people or animals, or even something geometric, like creating cubes, cones or spheres. Establishing a color scheme for the composition you're working on will help maximize the beauty of the stones you're showcasing. Color theory is something that I am very passionate about, and I could get into a whole video specifically on color theory. But for now, I'm just going to touch base topically on what I mean by color theory. I've set up here a color wheel using the primary and secondary colors. There are three primary colors in the color wheel, red, yellow, and blue. Adding the, any combination of those three colors will give you the colors in between them, the secondary colors. So red and yellow will give you orange. Yellow and blue will give you green. Blue and red will give you purple. If you cut directly across the color wheel from any color sitting on it, it'll give you its complementary color. So for example, red and green will give you the most contrast to each other within a composition, in the same way that purple and yellow would give you the most contrast within your composition. The wheel is also divided into warm and cool colors. You could create a warm composition using only red, orange, and yellow tones within your piece. There are near infinite variations of colors in the visible spectrum, and they may not all fit directly into the category of primary or secondary colors, or even tertiary colors, which would be a combination of your secondary and your primary color. So for purple and red, we have something like this purplish pinkish red, or before purple and blue, we have almost a blurple color. Here's a composition for one of my non-wire pieces that I put together using that color scheme. In this piece, I used a tertiary color scheme, a blurple and a purple red. You can create an infinite number of color schemes. Maybe you want something that's all monochromatic, or you want to use two pairs of complementary colors. Play around with some colors on your desk and see what steps out to you to maximize the most beauty out of the stones. 
Next, we have value. And value has to do with the lightness or darkness of the piece. In this case, I have a high contrast between the black centerpiece and the white metal, but I could decrease that contrast by oxidizing the piece and turning the metal into a dark gray near black. Experimenting with values is a great way to improve your compositions. In my case, I almost always go for high polished silver over oxidized dark gray or black silver, but it doesn't work for every composition. Try some things out and see what you like the best. Next, we have texture. This has to do with the feel, the appearance, or the thickness of the surface of the piece. For example, is it something smooth, or is it built primarily of rough or coiled textures? Maybe it's a combination of both. Lately, I've been working almost exclusively on smooth textured pieces, but including those varied settings like we've done videos on in the past, or different coil structures, will give your pieces more depth and texture, depending on the, the, what you're looking for. And finally, we have space. Space is the area around or within or in between the parts of your pieces, the positive and the negative space. In a piece like this, I have very little negative space within the composition. Everything is very tight and close together. In a piece like this, I've opened up the space around the stone, giving it a much more negative area to sit in. Playing around with the negative space within a piece is a great way to add some variation to your compositions. Positive and negative space doesn't always mean what's contained within the piece, but also the overall shape of the piece. I almost always work in a teardrop shape. You could manipulate the space to make your overall piece the shape of something more natural. Maybe it's a butterfly. Maybe it's a dragonfly. Whatever that shape is that you're going for overall, the space is an incredibly important part of designing. This video is far more conceptual than most of my videos, but the elements of design are incredibly important when it comes to creating your own compositions, and I wanted to make sure that it was something that I covered. For more behind the scenes looks into my work, check out my Instagram page, or to see what I have available for sale, check out my website. The links for those are in the description of the video below. One of the goals that I had set for the year was when I reached my first 50 patrons, I would go ahead and invest in new camera equipment, a microphone, editing software, and all the things that I would need to improve the overall quality of the channel. As of this morning, we're at 41% of that goal. So I wanted to give a huge thank you shout out to all the patrons who are already supporting. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, follow the link in the description of this video below. Thank you to Ben, Bevan, Cheyenne, Don B, Don N, Diane, Earthstar Creations, Isaac, It's Just Tricky, Janine, Jerry, Myrna, Nancy, Pearly Baker, Robin, Susan K, Susan L, and Vondel McKnight.